my number one essential job to get done now or in winter in my garden is because I have had major issues this year with pests in my greenhouse. And that's why my number one job, regardless of everything else that I will get done, my number one job is to get the greenhouse deep cleaned and to get it fumigated. So let me take you through that because this year it's going to be a bit more than just your average greenhouse clean. Now then, I'm talking about a deep clean of my greenhouse. So you guys see me all the time. I like to keep on top of keeping my greenhouse neat and clean as much as I can to try and prevent those problems. But to do a deep clean, I'm going to have to get it emptied, get everything out of the greenhouse so that I can get in here cleaned and get into every little nook and cranny. So how do I start then? Well, quite simply, with a good brush and wipe down. I start at the top and I brush everything, the, the frame, the glass, all of the little nooks and crannies. And let me show you what I mean, because my greenhouse is a type that has these channels in the frame. And that is brilliant because it lets me attach things like my shelves, or you can get benchy staging that attaches to those. They're really useful even in winter. If I want to put bubble wrap in here to insulate the greenhouse, I get little turning pins that go into this part of the frame. So it's really, really useful. But that is a harbinger of doom. I guarantee when you clean out these little channels, you're going to find little tiny snails hidden in there, little tiny slugs in there. It's a perfect place for things to hide. So get the brush in there, give that a good brush, get anything out of there that you can. So once we've started at the top and we've brushed everything really well, we've got into all these little nooks and crannies all the way down, don't forget the base. Again, my greenhouse, the base, has got these channels on it that I need to make sure I get into. Give that a good brush as well, because there's going to be more in those bottom bits than you'll find in the upper areas. Get in there. Get rid of it now. And don't forget all those little channels around your glazing. Every greenhouse is different. The glass in mine sits in channels, so I need to get into those channels with a brush as well and get them as clean as I can. Your greenhouse might have overlapping panels where your glass is. You can get in there with a plant label because there's not a lot of space and you can get in and make sure there's nothing in there. So that's the first thing then. We give everything a really good sweep, not just the floor, but all the frame and the glass and all the nooks and crannies. Start at the top, work your way down, okay? Once I've done this, that's when I give the floor a good sweep and get rid of all of that stuff. And then it's the good old bucket of soapy water and a sponge. Again, it's the same precision. Go around, get everything clean with that. Focus on the glass, start at the top. Get the glass really, really clean because you want that light to come through. So you want to get rid of anything that's blocking that light. All this year's build up of all the dust and bits and pieces, bits of plant matter, all of that. Get it all wiped down. Get into all these nooks and crannies with the soap and water too. All the way down again to the base. Go round and make sure you're giving everything a really good clean the best you can. Now there are parts of my greenhouse that I can't take outside when I do this. Namely, this big shelving unit at the back. It is absolutely solid. It was built inside the greenhouse and it doesn't move. Also, these shelves, just because they're so fiddly to take out and put in and move, I just leave them in place and give them a good clean. Now, one thing to remember when you're doing this is top and bottom, okay? So give the top a really good brush down, give the bottom or, or the underneath a really, really good brush. Because again, there are going to be channels and nooks and crannies that things will be in things we'll use to overwinter and this is what we're trying to get rid of. Now on any average year when I clean the greenhouse 
after a bucket of soapy water in a sponge. That's me. I give it a rinse and I'm happy and I bring everything back in and set it up. This year, however, it's different because this year is about the deep clean. So I'm going to a bit more effort this year. So the next thing I'm going to do then is going to help to deal with any potential fungus and moulds that might be in the greenhouse. Now, that's actually more common than you might think. All those little nooks and crannies I told you about, perfect places for fungus and mould because they're going to sit damp and undisturbed. Those channels between your glass, or for me, the channels the glass sit in, again, perfect little places for all that mould and fungus to live. So we're going to make sure we get in there as well when we do this. And it's simply, we're going to give the greenhouse a disinfect. Now you get different ways of doing this. Some people do it with the bucket and sponge. I've already done the whole clean, but I'm going to step more. So I've actually got a greenhouse disinfectant that I'm putting into my sprayer. And I'm going to go round and spray everywhere in the greenhouse. The glass, the frames, all those little bits to get in, the little channels, all around the base on the greenhouse, making sure I get to everywhere because I'm wanting to kill off as much of those spores as I can to try and prevent them coming back next year. And with that disinfectant then, I said all the nooks and crannies. For me, I've got my fancy backboard for my sockets that I made and I cut our channel logo into this. So that means there's all these little bits that get nasties in there. So in there, get that cleaned as well. Give it a good spray with the disinfectant as well. Don't forget things like that. Now granted, it looks like a bit of a Ghostbusters moment in here with my proton pack. Just make sure guys, never cross the beams. Now, when we do this, we spray on a disinfectant or we rub on a disinfectant. We call it a contact clean. And what that means is you want to leave it in contact with the surfaces for five to 10 minutes. That gives it time to do its work and kill all the nasties. So again, like before, once that's had its 10 minutes, go around with a hose and give it all a good rinse down. What I'm also doing while I've got the hose in here and I'm doing the rinse down, I'm going to switch it to the jet nozzle just to get into all those little channels in the frame and the bits around the base, all of that. And you'd be surprised, even after you've given it a really good clean, you'll be surprised what will actually come out with the force of the jet. If, like me, you've got power in your greenhouse, remember and be careful about this when you're cleaning. If you can, switch the power off, okay? Do all this with the power off. If you can't switch the power off, then try and cover over these in any way you can, okay? I've shown you me doing it before with just takeaway containers taped over them. If you've got outdoor sockets in your greenhouse with the cover on them, you can close them over. But just remember guys that they don't stop condensation. So when you're finished, remember and open up those socket covers and give it a few hours to just dry out and get rid of the condensation. Okay then, we have emptied the greenhouse cleaned the inside, given it all a good sweep, the frame, everything got into all the little bits. We've gone round with soapy water in a sponge and we have used the most elbow grease we have ever used and we've got it all sparkling. And then I've gone round and I've sprayed with the disinfectant and I've left that to sit for 10 minutes just to make sure it gets the chance to kill everything. And again, another spray. What's next then? Well, I'm going to go around and make sure my greenhouse is dry. Now, this takes a bit of time, going around and drying the frame, getting into everywhere you can, drying the glass, trying not to leave any streaks in the glass. But the reason I do this then is, I want to make sure there's no water left inside my greenhouse. There's nothing that's going to drip. Okay, I want to get rid of as much of that as possible. And this bit of drying takes time. If you leave it too wet in here and you shut up overnight, you're going to get a lot of condensation in here. It's going to be quite wet and I don't want that. I want it to be as dry as I possibly can. So that's why I'm going to make this effort to dry it afterwards. Now, the thing is, while I'm doing all of this, there's no point in me then bringing all my greenhouse supplies back in, like my benches, my trays, all of this stuff. There's no point in me bringing that back into a nice, beautiful, clean, disinfected greenhouse 
and it's bringing in any nasties that I just tried to get rid of. Kate actually cleaned all of this outside. She cleaned all of these trays. All of my pots you see, these all got clean and they all got rinsed in solutions with bleach to make sure they got rid of any fungus etc. Because you guys know I had problems with damping off last year. So Kate's made sure that I'm not starting with that again. She did a great job and it took her hours and it is a chore but it is worth it guys. And then there's the outside. So the obvious thing then is the glass needs a really good clean, exactly the same as you do on the inside. For the same reasons, it needs to be nice and clean so you can get as much light through there as possible. The outside is probably going to be more dirty than the inside and have quite a lot of stuff on it like um, bird poo and stuff that you want to get rid of. But also on the outside, there are all these nooks and crannies in the frame that because they're outside, um, they're going to harbour pests and things that will live in there if you let them. But also, I've got gutters on my greenhouse and I need to make sure that they get a good clean so that they can do their job. And the thing with my gutters is, so I've got gutters on both sides of the greenhouse and they link together at the back and then feed into my water butt. So this water butt is all the water coming from my greenhouse every time it rains. So not only do I want to make sure my gutters are clean as possible so that that works and it fills the water butt, but I want to make sure there's nothing in there that I don't want in that water. So here's a top tip. Before you clean the outside of your greenhouse, remember and unhook your water butt because you don't want all that soapy water or cleaning solution or whatever going into your water butt and you then use that to water your garden. Yeah, when I'm cleaning outside, I can get into it with a mop and bucket and that helps me get onto things like the roof, all the hard to reach bits and I can really go for it. But the front of my greenhouse, I've got these two apple trees. It's a bit heavy to move, but also I don't want to just cover them with the soapy water and just make a mess. So a uh, bucket and sponge for the outside of the greenhouse. Just a little bit more careful. Um. So there are two on this tree that aren't ready yet, that's it. Right, okay, you be truck person. Notice how careful I'm being? If you're not careful and you just bump these in, they'll bruise. And then they don't last very long. Just like we did inside the greenhouse, work from the top down. And don't forget the down. So all these channels, things like the channel for my door, Keep that clean, get it a good clean, because anything in there is going to prevent the door opening. And when you get a freeze, it can cause your door to jam shut. And it's quite difficult to fix that until things thaw again. Also, around the bottom, all these frames and the base, give that a good clean. Because trust me, you're going to find things like slugs and snails there and you want to get rid of them. Now, that could be you. Everything is now clean you're good to go. I've got one more step I've done this year. Just one. I used a garlic candle to fumigate the greenhouse. Okay, now here's the thing. I've never used a garlic candle before, so I don't know how good it is, and it's going to have to wait a little while till I can judge. But as of now, I can tell you this. It's really simple to do. And the good thing about a garlic smoking candle, rather than say the insecticidal candles or the sulfur candles, it's not dangerous sulfur dioxide gas or anything like that, but you can actually leave your plants in the greenhouse while you do it, which is why I chose it. Because my problems were white fly and aphids. And even all these new plants that I've only got going over winter, I was seeing the aphids and the white fly coming back because of course they live in the greenhouse. So I wanted to kill all that off too, the stuff on the plants. So I brought everything back in including the plants and then I lit a garlic smoke candle in here and left it overnight.
Now, I was hesitant because it's the first time I've used it. It did say two things. One, it wouldn't damage the plants and it definitely did not, as you can see. And it did kill all the aphids and things that were on them. Coming in the next day and I could shake these and just see everything just fall into the floor. So it's great it did do that. The second thing, which was a bit of a worry, I had just gone to all this effort to clean my greenhouse and I worried if I had a smoke candle in here, would it leave residue on my nice clean greenhouse? Was I going to end up having to clean smoke marks off of my glass? Now, the next morning there was a little bit of residue on the glass and I was a bit annoyed. It looked like condensation until I tried to wipe it off and it just smeared. But if I had left it, what I discovered was after a few hours of the sun coming out, that all disappeared. And if I hadn't wiped it, I wouldn't have smeared the glass on that one little bit. So yeah, it said it wouldn't leave any residue and it didn't. So I'm quite happy about that. I can't say for definite if it's going to work long term. But what I can say is when I came in here the next morning, I did find quite a few dead things. Uh, on shelves and things that had obviously fallen and it definitely went to work on my plants and the aphids and white fly on them so I'm quite happy at the minute. Now the big tester is going to be in the start of the season so it's going to be February, March, April time because that's when things warm up and the insects really get going. So will I see a reduction given that hopefully I've got rid of this year's lot? Let's hope so and you know I will update you. Now, there is one job left. It's the traditional one job in my greenhouse that signifies it's been cleaned and it is all done and beautiful. And that is this. I've had this little sign for years and it says it all. All you need is love, a cup of tea and your garden. That's been my deep clean of my greenhouse. See you folks.